Good morning, guys. Monday morning here at the shop, 7.20. Just got here a few minutes ago. Uh, today, if you guys have been following along, you know that I said we were going to come in and have our DTF printer already ready to go from uh, coming in on Saturday. However, just didn't feel like coming in this weekend. So uh, we took the weekend off and um, now we have to make up for that and get the DTF printer moved out to the back. So we have to do a few things first. Michaela right now is cleaning off the break area because we have to take down that shelf. Number two, we have to take this door off of the hinges so that we can fit the dryer throughout the, through the door. Um, I know that there's been a couple people wondering, this is a standard uh, 36 inch doorway. It's actually a little less, it's like 35 inches with the um, whatever this is, uh, framing around it. So uh, 35 inches wide. What we also have to do is take these um, things off right here. I'm not exactly sure what to call them. It's for the end of the roll. Um, so we're going to take those four bolts off on each side. And then what I'm hoping we can do is just take the, take the whole assembly off of the printer um, while keeping the actual rollers and bars on the printer, um, the end of the thing there. And that would make things a lot easier rather than having to disassemble the whole back area piece here. If we could just take the bolts out of here and then slide it off, that's going to be a lot easier to do. So. Let's get started working on this, I think, and then we will move to take off the door. Taking off the door is not that big of a deal. It's more getting it on that's the challenging part. So let's go ahead and uh, take these four bolts out of each side and see if we can take it all off in one piece. All right, let's give this a whirl, see how it goes. You need a 516, or er, no, sorry, this is actually the 316 Allen wrench to remove the bolts on the back here. And what I'm going to do is just loosen them. I'm not going to fully remove them. Then I'll also go ahead and unplug the uh, feed roller just uh, to go ahead and make sure that I have it done with. Now I'm going to go do the same thing on the other side and we'll see if I'm able to just pull this off all as one piece. All right, guys. I got that one side off and I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to because it was going to be too stiff but uh, if I got that side off I should be able to get this side off and I did but I just also took one of the bars off I'm not sure if you guys were able to catch that uh, hopefully I can get that back on there without having to um, do too cool, much extra work I think cool I can into the mouth but that was much easier than I thought nice nice all right, cool. Let's go ahead and take the door off of the hinges. All right, I didn't actually end up putting the bolts all the way in the last time. All right, that guy. So I will need to get a screwdriver for those last couple, but I got one of the bolts out. last one's not going to be very easy because the door is at an angle like you guys can see, but let's see how it goes. Giving me a bit of trouble here at the end. If I had Michaela to come and hold the door open. There we go. Got it. All right. That wasn't so bad. That's everything I had to do. I think uh, while Michaela is still taking down the shelf, what I am, well, she already got the shelf done. Um, so she's just working on taking down the brackets right now. While she is doing this, I think I'm gonna start taking out the trash because there is a bunch of boxes and trash in the way, uh, preventing us from getting the printer out of the room. So start working on that right now and then hopefully we'll be good to get the printer out. guys 942 have just been messing around getting everything all sorted out Michaela is tidying up that room uh, right now I am working on plugging in the printers getting the computers moved over and everything uh, to do with that 
that seems to be all right. It's not, not the best, not the worst. Better than having to like hop over it like we were having to do. I also got the rails put back on. It was significantly easier taking them off than putting them back on. The bars kept on falling off on me and uh, it was not nearly as fun as it was to take it, take it off. But anyways guys, with that, I think we are all set up. Now we have two DTF printers out here in the shop. I really can't believe it. Look how crazy this looks. Ooh wee guys. Love it when a plan comes together. So yeah, we have um, both of the printer network cables routing over here behind the couch to now both of the computers. So it's not the most ergonomic, like we have two keyboards and mice, but maybe I'll get a KVM and uh, we won't have to deal with that. That way we could just have like one keyboard, one mouse, rather than having both of these two um, keyboard and mice here. But yeah, guys, I am super excited. Both of the printers are moved out here and ready to go. So now we can get started printing for the day. I think Michaela is going to work on the reception just a little bit longer, get everything how she wants, set up the coffee bar, stuff like that. But I am geeked, guys. Right, guys going on four o'clock 355 right now uh, just finishing up uh, the custom orders on DTF printer number one we just have a little bit longer on this file it's at 22 uh, or 16 percent and it's like 220 inches long um, then we have some other files in the roll uh, but yeah right now I'm just kind of scrambling to get these customs printed since Michaela uh, only printed the WWs today um, so I had to uh, get these guys loaded up at the end here and uh, thankfully everything uh, seems to be working out. I think we'll be able to make everything on time to UPS. But uh, yeah guys, everything has been uh, pretty busy today. We've just been answering all of the emails and messages from this weekend. I think I'm a little zoomed in. Oh boy, that's too zoomed in. Um, answering emails and messages on the computer. And then also I got to show you guys the reception area. So. We made a number of different changes to it. It's looking like it's going to shape up pretty nice. So we still have a bit of work to do on the coffee bar. As you guys know, that's Michaela's gig, but here is going to be my desk and then Michaela's desk over here. And yeah, guys, it just feels really good to be able to walk around in here, have the room, uh, have just some room to like do things, you know? Um, I think over here, what we were planning on doing is I'm gonna make it like nice and aesthetic looking. And then I can shoot from like over here on this tripod. And this would be like my dedicated shooting area for the vlog and stuff. Um, and then I also want to start doing like, like I said, learning videos every week on the channel here, like maybe on Sundays. Um, so I think I'm going to try and make the wall on the back that the TV is like a nice looking set, nice and aesthetic. Get some like some plants, maybe like a couple of shelves. I already have them. Um, I got some shelves. I was going to use these rope lights right here but they were like garbage, man. Yeah, don't buy these these rope lights. Maybe invest in the Govi ones that are like $75, but these were only 36. So um, <laughs> there's definitely a reason why they were $36. Those will be getting returned. And then I got these shelves here that I'm going to put on the wall by the TV. Got some plants in here. I think I have one. Oh yeah, right here. Got this, got this nice plant. That'll look great in the background. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so just like some aesthetic things to look good in the background of my videos. And um, for the uh, main videos that we do every week, and then also just like for the vlog and whatnot, can uh, do like a little, when I do my sit down chats with you guys, and I uh, can just do it from there. So I think everything will turn out to be real cool with that. File is at 22%. Once this gets done, I gotta cut it and then get the customs all packaged up. But yeah, guys, today was a pretty good day. I'm really happy that we got all of these things worked out here. Um, both of the printers out there, that looks crazy. I cannot believe like 
look at this. There's, we have two DTF printers, man. Wild. It looks so good. I'm really happy that how this turned out. Um, I am also glad that we were able to do this configuration. So if you guys watched my earlier videos, you know that I was planning on doing one printer here and then one printer on the wall there. So it was going to be kind of like a flipped orientation. And um, I was going to do that so that we can pull out the trays from the dryer. Uh, but it turns out like that's not that big of a deal. And I was worrying about something for nothing. Um, so yeah, this looks real good. I like the configuration of this. We still have plenty of room behind the printers to go back there and load up the film and plenty of room to walk in between. So really happy with how this turned out. I think it's going to really optimize the flow. Um, you can have one person on watching both printers at the same time. And then here, I think I definitely should invest in a KVM just so that we can use um, the same monitor and keyboard. We don't have to have two, two monitors, two keyboard uh, operating each computer. If I just got a KVM, that would make things a lot easier. Um, but yeah, works nonetheless. Uh, and uh, I will catch up with you guys when there is a update. As you guys can see, there is a bit of a problem right there that I gotta go fix. So yeah, I guess I'll tell you guys, when this happens, what I typically do is just adjust the film at the bottom of the uh, dryer, so the other end of the dryer, and I just pull it to it towards the opposite of whichever way uh, it wants to go. And as you can see, it just straightens itself out um, once it gets pulled by the, by the feeder. So I'm not sure if you guys were really able to tell what I was doing, but here I'm at the other end of the dryer, and then I just kind of moved this over here, moved it over slightly, and then we can lock these guys back down. And just doing that kind of ensures that the film is evenly aligned on the dryer and the printer, and you won't have to worry about problems like that. I gotta clean this up. Um, but yeah, you won't have to worry about problems like that. Alright guys, as you can see I had to uh, redo the file on this one because I didn't add the color bar and then this design right here was solid black so then when I moved on to this design which had other colors in it I started getting some banding so I had to redo the file uh, and put a color bar on it so hopefully um, no more problems will crop up with this and I just wanted to kind of show you guys exactly how I do that. Um, so in case any of you guys are not completely familiar what exactly I'm talking about, uh, when I call it a color bar, it's not actually necessarily a color bar. It is um, a confidence strip, as they call it. So I just pulled up a file here, and then um, if you guys aren't already using Digital Factory, um, I would highly recommend getting it. If you guys are still using Maintop, you seriously need to get Digital Factory, like Main top is complete garbage compared to Digital Factory. I know Digital Factory is pretty expensive, um, but trust me, it is well worth it. Um, currently, if you guys do uh, want to know, I have a little bit of a hack going on where I am only using my one Digital Factory license on the computer from digital or DTF printer number one. And then I am just using this to rip all of my files and then uh, transferring the files onto an external hard drive and then I just like plug it into the other computer and then I can have the files available on this computer without actually having to have Digital Factory. If, does that make sense? So I just uh, rip all of the files on this computer and then transfer the ready to go files over to the DTF printer number two. That way I don't have to pay for two licenses and whatnot. I think this way will work pretty well. Um, it's just how, how efficient can it be over the long term. All right guys, so back to what I was saying though. Um, so for your confidence strip, what you're going to want to do though, if you guys haven't already, you're going to want to nest all of the designs on your sheet 
So you do that by going to the page icon right here, and then you just click nest all, and that will make all of the files one big design. So then after you do that, you come on up to here where it says Q, go down and select properties, and then here is the Q properties for your printer. And then here is the, a whole bunch of different setting options that you can choose. But what you're gonna wanna do is go to the print labels options. And then right here you can see confidence strip and you can choose a whole bunch of different places. You can put it on the left, the right side, uh, the top, which is where I initially had it before uh, someone told me why are you doing it that way? You should have it going vertically so that it prints during the entire print, which obviously makes a ton of sense. So yeah, I have mine on the right, and then I have a 0.4 of an inch with a confidence strip. You can increase it or decrease it. I'm at the lowest amount that you can go. But yeah, guys, that is how you add a confidence strip in Digital Factory. Again, if you guys are not using Digital Factory, you really need to. It's $1,000. I know it hurts, but man, it really pays for itself in the amount of time that you save from having to use Maintop. Maintop was hot garbage when I used it. I tried to use it. Like, trust me, I tried for probably like the first three weeks because I didn't want to pay the thousand dollars that Digital Factory costs. But like, honestly, man, it sucks when they know what they have. Like a company knows how good their product is because obviously they're gonna, they're gonna charge top dollar for that. So that's what's going on here. I mean, it's a, a pretty niche software, I would feel like, right? Like how long did that take to develop? But how many people are actually gonna end up buying it? Probably like, maybe 10,000 people if they're like, that would be like over a couple of years, 10,000 people, I feel like. Um, so yeah, they gotta make it expensive. It can't just be like something like Photoshop where there's gonna be like millions of different users. There's not gonna be that many users. So I get why they make it expensive, but I mean, that doesn't help anymore like the price tag, you know? So I would really look into Digital Factory if you guys are not using it already. It's a game changer, um, but anyways, Confidence strip seems to be working well, not running into any banding, and this is that black design. I just decided to reprint it, um, so the customer will end up getting two copies of this. But uh, yeah, guys, still working on these designs. 26% of the way through the new file, and uh, then after this, we'll be all done. I am gonna start building the boxes, putting the shipping labels on them, so once they come off of the printer, we can just get them cut, loaded in the box, and head off to UPS. Just about done with the film. Just getting the last little bit here out of the machine. And there we go. Now I got to get the individual designs cut up and then just throw them into their box. All right guys, 525, got those orders all packaged up. Now let's go ahead and get the capping solution applied to the DTF printer and we can head on out of here. A lot of you guys wonder about the D or this capping solution. Uh, we get it from DTG Pro, and then what we're doing, here, there you go, and you can get the nice bottle, not sponsored. If you guys want to support me, DTG Pro, hit my line. Um, and then we grab literally like a cap full, pour the rest back in, and then we're gonna go back to the DTF printer with this. back here at the DTF printer. You guys can see that, cool. I'm just gonna move the head over and then but fill the pads up like a quarter to 33% full. You don't want them halfway because that'll probably be too much. I feel like going like 33%. And there you go. You just go ahead and then return the print head to its normal position. And then you can see I still have a good amount in here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this back into the bottle. And then this is going to be it for today. You can turn the guy off, turn the heating switch off, the dryer is already off. Let's go ahead and throw this back in there and then we'll be good to head out of here for today.
And all right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the vlog, please leave a like down below. Hit the subscribe button. Again, super close to 500. I think we're at like 492. But with that, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>